Let's look at piecewise defined functions. A piecewise defined function is a function that is defined in pieces, or according to different rules depending upon the input. So for example, this would be considered a piecewise defined function. So what does this mean? It means that f is defined by different rules according to what x is. That is, if x does not equal negative 1, then f of x is equal to negative 3. Otherwise, if x does equal negative 1, then f of x is equal to negative 4. So there are different rules that define f depending upon the input x. So let's compute f of negative 5, f of negative 1, and f of 2, and then we'll graph f. Let's start with f of negative 5. Since negative 5 does not equal negative 1, we'll be using this first piece here. That is, f of negative 5 is equal to negative 3. All right, and what about f of negative 1? We'll be using the second piece down here because the input is negative 1, which means f is equal to negative 4. And finally, what about f of 2? Well, since 2 is not equal to negative 1, we'll be using this first piece. That is, f of 2 is equal to negative 3. So it remains for us now to graph f. So let's say that this is the y-axis. And this is the x-axis. And let's say this is negative 1. And this is negative 3. And this is negative 4. As long as x does not equal negative 1, f of x or y is equal to negative 3. And y equal to negative 3 is the equation of this horizontal line here. However, when x is equal to negative 1, we have an open circle because when x is equal to negative 1, the y value is negative 4. So this would be the graph of f. Let's look at another example. Let g be defined by this piecewise function. We're going to find g of negative 5, g of negative 2, and g of 2, and then we'll graph f. So let's start with computing g of negative 5. Now which of these three intervals does negative 5 lie in? It lies in this first interval, doesn't it? Because negative 5 is less than negative 3. Therefore, we're going to use the first rule or the first piece to compute this. So g of negative 5 is equal to negative 4. All right, what about g of negative 2? Well, which piece or rule are we going to use to compute this? Well, negative 2 lies in the second interval, doesn't it? So we'll use the second rule. That is, g of negative 2 is equal to negative 2 minus 1, which is equal to negative 3. And finally, what about g of 2? Which of the three intervals does 2 lie in? And we have to be careful here, because we see a 2 here, and we see a 2 here. However, the condition of equality is down in this third interval here. Therefore, we use this third piece. That is, g of 2 is equal to 3. Okay, so it still remains to graph g. So let's say this is the y-axis, and this is the x-axis, and let's say this is negative 3, and this is positive 2, and this is positive 3, and negative 4. When x is strictly less than negative 3, then y, or g of x, is equal to negative 4. Therefore, for any x less than negative 3, 
y is equal to negative 4. And then for any x between negative 3 and 2, the function is defined to be x minus 1, which is the equation of a line with y-intercept equal to negative 1 and slope 1. So it will look like this. And right when we get to 2, we have an open circle because looking back over here, this is a strict inequality. But also looking back over here, we have the condition of equality at negative 3, which means over here we have to close this circle up. And also this will be negative 1 because the y-intercept is negative 1, and this would be 1 because the slope is 1. And then for x greater than 2, g of x is equal to 3. So we have a closed circle at 2, and then y equal 3 is the equation of a straight line. And this is how we work with piecewise defined functions. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.